Hey everyone, this is Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you what you need to do to stream unmatched. Now, it's not real difficult to get set up to do this, to be able to stream onto like Twitch or YouTube. There's just a program you're going to have to download and get on your computer, and I'm going to show you what that program is and what all you have to do once you get that program installed. So what we'll look at here is, and the browser here, we're going to search for OBS download. And we're going to see it'll pull up the obsproject.com download. We can click that and it will bring this up. And right here, we can see that we can download Open Broadcaster Software. They have it for Windows. They have it for Mac. They have it for Linux. Um, I'm going to show you a Windows install. Um, a Mac install isn't going to look a whole lot different. Um, if you're downloading Linux, you probably know what you're doing on a computer, and I'm not even sure why you're really coming to me for help. Um, but anyway, but do that and get your program installed. It's a pretty decent sized program, so it'll take a little bit of time for it to... Uh, get downloaded and going and once you get installed you'll get to a point where it's going to start asking for some settings and some preferences and so i'll show you what you need to do to get those set right i'm going to go ahead and set mine here to look more like what it does when you start over new right as you get going you're going to see stuff look like this this little auto confirmation wizard will pull up you can do three different things here you can set up for Streaming with recording being secondary. That's what we're going to want here. You can set it up for recording, but you don't stream because um, you can record um, stuff that way. And then you can set it up just to use the virtual camera, which would be to make the output from this be like a camera that you could use in like Discord or something. We're going to go ahead and go with that top one there. Now it's going to ask you what all we want to set things at. I would go ahead and set your, if you have a monitor that's at 1920 by 1080, I would probably go ahead and set it to that. We want to go ahead and have the palette at that because that will make things easier. Um, let's just go ahead and do the 30 frames per second. 60 can be nice for some games where there's a lot of action, but that's not really needed for unmatched and you're like literally like keeping the... Uh, amount of data that's having to go through there a lot lower dropping that resolution or not the resolution but dropping that frame rate down make things easier because 60 is just kind of overkill for an unmatched that's going to ask you which service you want to go with here you've got different options in here twitch youtube facebook um, restream and twitter we're going to go ahead and do twitch although the other ones aren't going to look a whole lot differently. There's two different ways that you can do this here. You can use a stream key, which is you just take, um, you go into the settings on Twitch or on YouTube and get the key out of that and then drop it in here and then you could stream onto that or you can connect an account. Uh, the only reason you'd want to use a stream key is like if um, you're streaming onto someone else's channel and they don't want to give you full access to it they can give you that stream key that can be good temporarily um, to run that and then um, and then afterwards you can't use that again we're going to go ahead and go with the connect account which is going to be a lot cleaner this will pull up and it's going to want you to put in a username and password and all that jazz here you know how this goes And then once you get to this here, it's going to have you do the verifying through your email, which is not a big deal. Just put that code in. And now that's got all of your information for your Twitch account in there. Okay, now it's going to try to figure out your local settings. It's going to do um, an internet bandwidth test. And some other stuff. The static back there is just uh, to make it look fancy. This will take it a little bit of time to do this. 
All right, so it's taken it a few minutes to do this. It's given us some recommended settings here. We can go ahead and apply these settings because we can tweak them later on. And it gives us here, and you notice it's dropped this chat box right here. What is this box here? Well, this is your chat, and this is your stream information. So what we're going to want to do is... We could take this, and you see, as we put the cursor into different places, it tries to put them on here. So let's put you right there for now. And then we could put you there. We can move all these boxes around. We can also, if we wanted to, I could take this one and drop it in the same box as that one by hovering over it. You can see the where it says stream information lights up when I do that. I could drop that there. Now I have chat and stream information. See, the last stream I did was hack slash repeat volume two. We can change that to something else. This will just be the name. We'll just go with unmatched in general. And we can click that, and this will show us a live chat during the um, stream, which would be very nice. And it does this for both, uh, for both YouTube and um, Twitch. All right, well, it's time to start adding some things in here. Well, uh, the first thing to do, let's go ahead and add a game in here. Um, so we're going to go scenes. These are going to be the different screens that you can have up. You can have a bunch of different ones. Sources are going to be individual things that you can have in it. What I'm going to do here, put sources right there, just because this will get a little big. And that way we can see that a little more. And then we'll have our audio mix and everything there. Okay, so we'll add some sources into this scene that we have here. So I'm going to click this. We've got different things that we can do here. We've got your audio input, which that's going to be like uh, microphones and things. Output's going to be the sound coming out of your computer. Browser is you can actually put a browser up in here and have information off the web put on there. There are a lot of things out there that are designed to make a web page in um, a format that looks really clean in OBS. Display captures is literally just grabs a screen and grabs whatever is happening on that display on your computer. Game capture will grab... Um, the input from some game. This is usually going to be a game that is a full screen game. It just grabs that game. If you put other windows in front of it, um, those are ignored. That's the difference between it and the display capture. An image is just um, like a JPEG or a PNG or some sort of file. Slideshow is exactly what that sounds like. Media source is going to be like um, dropping a video or a sound file in there. A scene is you could take one of these scenes and put a scene inside of a scene and kind of have a scene-ception thing going on. Text lets you put text on it. Video capture device is going to be um, usually like webcams and things. And then window capture is going to be some uh, window um, that you have open on your uh, computer. So what we're going to start with, we're going to go with a game capture. We can name this something. Let's name this TTS. And click OK. Capture any full screen application. Well, no, we want to grab a specific window. Oop window click this so we can see i have two programs open here streamlabs which isn't a game um, that's actually what's recording this because normally i would record with obs but i'm going to use streamlabs streamlabs is another great piece of software i mean you could do a lot of this through streamlabs i'm just more familiar with obs so that's what i'm showing you i've selected tabletop simulator here and we can see some things here. Um, capture cursor is a big one that's on there that you can turn the cursor on or off. We'll click OK. And hey, look, here's Tabletop Simulator here on this screen. Now, I am set up to where I have two monitors. Okay, I have dual displays. You can do this with a single display. It's just um, a lot more back and forth between the pro programs. You're going to be hitting that Windows key and jumping between these a lot. But I can go over to my other screen, and you can see I've got my cursor over here. 
and the things that you're familiar with in Tabletop Simulator can all be messed around with here. You know, looks like Tabletop Simulator. No big deal there. So we got that on there. Well, the next things we're going to do is we're going to want to add some audio because they're going to want to be able to hear something, right? So let's see what we could do with audio. We'll add these up here. We're going to do an audio input. Let's call this headphones. And it will show the different audio devices. Right now I've got the audio out of my webcam and the audio out of my headphones that I'm talking on here. We're going to use these. That goes on here and now the headphones are right there because I named them headphones. We're also going to want to add audio output which is coming out of the computer. We'll call this computer default audio and we'll go here and we're just going to set this to default and whatever is the default that will go through so you can see as i talk that headphones is going to make some noise here as i go over here to tabletop simulator i'm going to do some things that make some noise and if you watch this bar right here while i make noise i'm going to go shuffle these cards i can see the shuffle sound makes noise and picking up and dropping yin anger around makes noise and probably flip the table makes noise. So this is the basic stuff you have to have to be able to stream. Okay, just right here. Technically, you don't have to have any more than this. Okay, if you want to bare bones it, this will work great for you here. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll go into, I'm going to look at the settings over here and help you get the stream settings set up. And then we'll go into some more um, advanced things on it. So we're going to go to settings. Takes a minute to pick up settings and we're going to change a number of settings in here. Okay, there's not a whole lot that I'm going to change in general. We're going to leave that alone. Stream is just going to... Um, Show what services we're on. If we're wanting to change to a different service, we can click that. Um, I'll show you some other stuff you may want to do if you want to stream to like YouTube or something. Okay, so a few things we'll want to do in here. Now this, you can adjust your video bitrate here. Um, if you know what your internet um, speed, what your internet upload generally looks like. And you need to make sure you know your upload and not your download because this is sending out to the internet and we don't care what your download is. And the download is the big number that your internet uh, provider is going to show you. So they may tell you it's like a gig or something or you know, you may have 50 meg because or even less than that in some areas because internet service can vary a lot. Um, so we can set this to different things on that here. This is a number that it thought would look good, which is about 3,900. I'm going to lower it a little bit. I know what numbers I've used for streaming. Since unmatched is not like a lot of like high activity on there, you can lower this number and get away with dropping it quite a bit. I'm going to go with 3,000 there. We'll apply that. This is going to be a place where it will drop the recordings at. You can change the file size. You can change the type of files um, that it records as. If you're not going to record, then don't worry about this. Um, we're going to click on video and we can do some things. One thing I am going to change here, I actually like um, if you want to stream out at um, the full resolution there, you change it here. You want to go ahead and leave your base canvas at, you know, that high resolution, but you can drop this. If you think that it's not going to work really clean for, um, you know, that maybe you need to um, have your processor look at work a little bit less or your video card work a little bit less or your internet speed's a little shaky, you can drop this to like 1280 and that can help it a lot. If you think it's going to run smooth, you can go all the way up to 1920. Some other things that can be done, um, you can set to automatically record when streaming or turn that off. 
You can also set um, keep recording when the stream stops, depending on what you want it to do and want you, how you want it to behave. But that can all be done in there. And so that's basic um, basic settings on there. Now let me go ahead and show you adding a few other things onto this. Okay, well first of all, let's add a video capture device because we want to go ahead and add a webcam, right? Yeah. Okay, and it has the Logitech Stream Cam here, and uh, some cameras let you change a lot of things into custom, a lot don't. Oop, that went away. You know, I could do like that and bring it all the way up to like 1920. Um, if I wanted to, I could drop this to a smaller size on here somewhere. It just depends on, um, you know, what you want that to be be there um, if you're going if you know you're going to be shrinking it down and never doing it full screen like this you could probably drop it to another one and take a little bit less of a processor hit um, such as if we go to 640 by 480 here um, you notice that also made it much more square instead of widescreen um, it just depends on what you're wanting to do with it. if you think you're going to blow it up full screen maybe go bigger if you want it smaller you can go small screen just depends on what you want to do here. Mine's going to handle it here, so let's go ahead. Whoop, not, not up to there. That's higher resolution than what I need it. This right here is what I wanted it. Well, I made it 1920 by uh, uh, all the way up there, so it's huge. So we're going to want to shrink that down a bit. Hey, we can make it bigger and smaller there. Look at that. Okay, so I could do that. Another thing you can do is you can also, I'm going to show you this real quick. You know, grabbing any of these, it keeps the proportions on it, which is nice. So it's not going to drag things out of proportions. You could crop things by when you hover over it there, hit the Alt key, and then you can see that you're, um, you know, you know, do it, just cropping them that way um, if you want to. Um, or, you know, you can have it all the way out and just position it like you want it. Now that we're starting to drop other things on here, let me show you what's going on with these layers here. Okay, right now we have, let's put the headphones and the computer audio at the bottom. These don't really matter for the layers, but TTS and webcam matter a lot. Right now we have webcam is the top layer. If you've worked any type of software that has layers in it there, you'll know how this works. Webcam is on top of TTS, so we can see it if we drop TTS put TTS above webcam. Well, now the webcam's still there, but it's covered up by TTS, you know. You know, that's just the way that, you know, this will kind of show you what's going on there. Now, you may want to, since TTS is something we're not going to be moving a whole lot here, we can hit that, we can lock that, and now we can't select or move it, which is nice that as we go into here, well... Our cards are showing up here. What do we want to do about that? Well, there's some stuff that we can do. We can add an image. Let's make a hand hider. We'll call this hand hider. This name here is just to help you know what things are when they're in there. You can name them whatever crazy things you feel like. Okay, so we're going to select that. Boom. Yeah, we'll put that there. We'll use with that. Okay, and this is a little bit wider than our display, but we can go there, shrink it down to it, put it there. Oh, no, that's covering me now. Well, that's not what we wanted, so obviously hand hider needs to drop below the webcam. Hand hider can probably scoot over that way a bit. And let's go ahead and clean this a little bit. Let's make this. Now, when I go here to TTS, you can see the cursor here goes in. You can't see the cards there. So that's nice. Yeah, I can't see those cards. That's hidden now with this nice little banner here that I stole off of the restoration web page. And you can also do the same thing and lock that hand hider just so you don't lose that. Now, some other things we might be able to do, we can unlock TTS here. We can play with this a little bit. Let's slide this up because we got these things up here. See if we can get those hidden a little bit.
bit. Okay, and I'm just seeing the tops of the cards there, so we'll hit that. And while I'm playing with these cards, we'll... And then, hey, those little icons don't show up, and my hand is still hidden down there. Uh, so I've hidden a number of things with that. Let's play around with some text. We'll go up here to text. And we'll call this player one. And we can type whatever text in this we want. Gee, we can select a font and change it. That I like happens to be the font from the original Star Trek series. Uh -uh. Applying texture. G. We can add. And what we'll do now is I'm going to show you another thing we can do. We're going to copy. Now we're going to right click here. We can paste it as a reference, which will make it exactly the same thing here. And if we make any changes to that, they will duplicate on that. So let me show you this here. We can go into this one and we can change it to not be Poindexter G, but to be some other guy. And you see that they both change. Now what we'll do is we'll paste. Oops, I did the same thing there. Paste a duplicate, and you notice that these are both named player one, but this is one that is named player one two because this is the second player two. And we'll put the second player two down here. As we notice, if we go up to this one and change it to some other guy, that this one and that one change, but this one doesn't change because it's separate and it's a different thing now. So that's good to keep in mind. We'll do point extra G versus some other guy. Name this one. Let's rename this. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Rename this one. Player two. We'll rename that one player one. Hi. Right. And now we've got these on here now. So now we got some names on this, right? We could even do another and or sorry. Another text. Call it versus. Maybe we're just gonna make this says we will make it Arial black so it's nice and big let's go down here and do some other things let's make the color make the color red we're gonna click outline we'll do an outline on it yeah we can make this outline bigger Let's put a little more outline on that. I'm not happy with that outline. Want it? There we go. And now we can shrink the verses, and then we'll put the verses behind them. Mm, look at that. What I mean. And you can either drag things, or you can use the uh, arrows on your keyboard to move them around. If you don't like that font, we can change it here. We can change it to Arial Narrow. This is a little too skinny. Arial, let's go to regular Arial. Hmm. Yeah, regular Arial Bold. There we go. And we could do some other things. Let's take this versus out of here. Let's do this. We're going to do something else. Going to unlock our hand hider. We're gonna drag you over there. Let's 
And let's add some other things in here. We're going to add an image. I'm going to call this card. Card. I'm going to browse. And yeah, we're just going to select the character out of here. It's like the, let's just select the character out of here. It's like the Achilles. He's up first. Okay, boom. Hey, I happen to have these. Hmm. And what we'll do next is I will copy and then paste as a duplicate. And you're like, hey, I don't want a second Achilles. Well, that's okay. We'll be we'll be okay here. Put some other guy there. There we go. Let's do it like that. There, that looks pretty. Pretty good and symmetrical there, right? Well, why I did that is that we could click this and we could just click browse and now we can just select any character out of here that we want and it just changes it right there. And you can do that right there and then you can just change them very, very quickly just like you can change the names. change the names really quick there and so you can personalize your layout and do whatever you want to do with things on them you make them however you want let me go ahead and show you another scene let's go ahead and rename this scene let's call this TTS scene one we're gonna recreate something else that I have I'm gonna add this and we'll call this the waiting this will be the waiting screen. I'm going to add an image for a background. And we call this background. Do that. That there we'll now drag you to the size of that okay we're gonna add an image slideshow we'll call this show cards and first of all we'll go to the files we're gonna add a file we're gonna add a directory and I'm just gonna go back here to my drive so I'm just going back here to my drive, click the backs, it should put all the card backs in it. We're going to randomize that, we're going to click loop, and since I've gotten all these out to be the same size, time between slides, let's make this a lot quicker, let's make this 3000 milliseconds, so that'll be 3 seconds, there we go. Okay, now we can put this here. We could do that. Now we can right click, we could copy this. We're going to paste a duplicate, not a reference. We don't want to make a reference. If I make it a reference, it's going to be the exact same card on it that's on the other. Uh, now, once you start this up, um, they'll get in sync with each other and fade in and out at the same time. This is just a quirk of me having just added it that makes them add a little bit differently. Then you want to put something over that there. Do an image. Just go unmatched. Okay, right there. And we can make this whatever size we want it. Unmatched. And that's how you make a, one way to make a nice little um, screen there. That's basically my standard waiting, waiting screen that I use. 
is made just like that. Now you can have scene collections and have different sets of scenes up here. I could go to Unmatched, which this will bring up my regular screens that I have here for Unmatched, such as this screen there that I just recreated on the other one there. Got the proportions a little bit different. And you can see now that I brought it up that they they fade in and out um, in sync with each other. This is one that I made for Arsenal. Um, to have the cards on there, I've just got four cards instead of two. I put this little thing on the side here. You can rotate the text. Um, I slid the whole um, TTS screen up so that the bars, at the little menus at the top aren't there. Got them out of the way. And you can see it's quite a few things that we have there. Hack slash repeat. And this is a stream that I just did there. We will have things that basically I have the television as a frame. It's a PNG with a hollow section here in the middle that I can put whatever I want behind it. You know, I can click this I here, turn CRT, which is this video on and off. And then um, I added some white noise to the background of it there. And then we can go to these other things. Um, this would be the hack slash repeat thing there. Um, we don't have any of these boxes here because those cameras aren't hooked up. Um, getting multiple other people's cameras on there is a little fun. There's some ways to do that, but I'll have to show you that later. That's tricks for later. I don't reveal all my secrets. We have this here, and it does have me on there because my camera is actually here live but the others aren't and then just other things and you'll notice that we're getting this nice wipe as i do this here and that's here um set on the uh, scene transitions here i changed that changed the duration and you can go with some different wipes there um, they can make that really nice so yeah, this way you can have um, scenes set up for different types of things and not have them all clogging all of your stuff all at once. Go back to, we'll go back to regular unmatched here so I can talk to you a little bit easier here. Um, also on the profiles, you can make new profiles and it will go through all that stuff that we did at the beginning. Such as I have a YouTube profile, and we notice the things will look a little different here. Put the chat there. We have a manage broadcast setting here where we can um, create new broadcasts. I'm um, going leave some old ones in there, and I probably ought to delete some of those out of there. Um, YouTube works a little bit different, but you can put those in there. Select your thumbnail. Do all that in there, and if I were to start broadcasting now, it would stream out to YouTube, since here in my settings, you will see um, that the stream is connected to YouTube, and it is connected to the to the tabletop account right now. Um, let's go ahead and go back, and then I have a recording one, which is just set to record out at um, a real high quality, and then the format, so if I go in here into the settings, we will see, on the output here, that it's complaining here, um, that the MP4, um, that if something happens uh, where the stream dies in the middle of it, it will mess up that file. But I want it to go out as an MP4 because my editing software um, likes the MP4 better. And then um, rather than setting up another camera and pointing it at me and recording on that and having to send the um, video to my computer, I'll just, but I'll just use my webcam here to record and then I can um, put that video straight into my editing software. Um, and and that's how I make my other videos, either pointing it at me or um, putting my um, video software on a rig so it can point down at a table. But let's go back to Twitch. So I'm going to go back to a browser and 
This is one thing that can be annoying here that um, since the name of the browser changed, it doesn't recognize it. So I have to find my current browser there now and go to that. We'll go to Twitch here. And I can pull up my Twitch settings and here, um, my channel settings. We'll look at a few things here that can help you with this. And um, Twitch can have days that it acts a little silly. Um, I've seen the settings on Twitch when I was in it earlier today was being a little sluggish. Um, so, you know, this is something that may just happen here. If it sits here and spins for too long, you may have to uh, time out on it and do something else. Just refresh it. You can see the refresh helped it load up. It's just being a little, a little weird. You can link um, to other um, social media accounts that you have. I linked it to, to the tabletop here on my Twitch. One thing you want to do here, if you want the video on demand settings to be on, you'll need to turn that on here to store the past broadcasts. You can set it to always do that. Um, that's really good to have that there because that will leave it for a week where people can still watch that. Then you can also, um, I can show you, you can also download your, um, any video that's a VOD while it's on there. You can also set your channel to auto host other channels. You can click this and you'll see here that there are other people that if any of these people stream, which this is going to be a lot of the, um, a lot of the good ones here. If there any of them stream, it will put them on there automatically. Someone that's not on here actually is Dark Blade. There we go. Let's add Dark Blade 113 because he needs to be on here. Kind of bothered me that he wasn't. And then you can put it up here that uh. You can change the order of them so that the ones at the top, like um, if Zero Skater and Darth Kali were streaming at the same time, it would put Zero Skater stream over Darth Kali's on mine. And so I can, you know, move some others up here that are that are good and add them. And basically, um, over here on the side, you've got your other settings here. You've got your start streaming, which will let you stream. Um, start recording will record onto your um, computer. Starting to virtual camera will start that up so that you can send that to um, anything that you would send uh, like a webcam to. Um, you could put your webcam in here, do some fancy effects to it, and then send it to Discord that way. Studio mode is one thing I haven't covered here. We can click that. This gives us a preview of something that we'll have going next. Let's shrink that down a little bit to help this. And this is what's currently going out. So if I click on one of these, we can see like the waiting screen would be going next. I can hit transition. And then now the waiting screen is what's live. And this is what is currently up here. What's nice about that is that I can make changes. these changes while the waiting screen is up and I can change these to somebody else if I need to And actually, since I don't have any audio selected on the um, on this here, um, it wouldn't even pick up microphones or anything while the waiting screen's on. Then I could transition, and that's up there. Um, if you're going to get confused which one of these is which, I would tell you just to stay on the basic um, mode there and not be in studio mode. But studio mode definitely has... Um, a place where it can be useful. Now, if we wanted to um, 
make something for something else there we would need to um, get one of those programs open like I'm gonna go ahead and open up the digital version we're gonna make a new scene called digital okay let's go ahead and add this here now you can hear the music running from that um, with their heads. Knows I like Alice. Can't see the button because I covered it up in the covered up the button um, with me. Yeah, because I remember the button. Off down, with their heads. Down there. It's pretty simple. Oh, you're taking a hit there, Arthur. Pow. Anyway, we'll go ahead and 
exit out of that, and that's going to go away. Oh, it's black. Well, that's what happens when what you're trying to take isn't there. It's just, it goes away. Okay, so for Vorpal, there's some stuff we're going to need to do um, to make this um, work properly for Vorpal. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the scene collection, and this one's named blank right now. We're just going to duplicate this, and we're going to call this Vorpal. And and you're just going to want to make a separate set of scenes for Vorpal. Now, the reason you're going to want to make a separate thing for Vorpal is because if anything in there at all is using your webcam, you're going to have uh, problems because only one device can use the webcam. So what you'll need to do is select one of these that has it, click the webcam, just completely remove it and have it gone and now it's not in there um, if OBS is using it at all it will not be available for um, for Vorpal so we're gonna make a new scene we're gonna call this Vorpal I can help you a little bit with Vorpal I don't have a Vorpal subscription so all I can do is really give you a blank screen but we'll go here we're gonna go to a window capture we'll call this Vorpal board browser and ooh, it's trying to grab Streamlabs here which won't be good we want Vorpal board wait right, so that puts that there and of course we will as with everything need to add our input so that we can be heard and our output fortunately audio can be used in multiple different sources so you can send audio to OBS and to the browser um, you just can't do that with video now we'll go over here to Vorpal so what we're gonna do while we're in here is we're gonna hit F11 and what that is gonna do is make it full screen which is gonna help out a bit um, one thing you have that will be a problem is you've got this room code and everything up there you don't want people to see that but let's add our color source which we already have the gray color source in there so that works well and of course we can alt slide that up and cover that up there that works really good or you could get fancy do the image do your hand hider thing up there and do that something like that up there if you felt like it you, know, you could even drag a uh, vorpal down a little bit hide some of those other things on the bottom there you could shrink that down a little bit put it in the middle and then put like the cards on either side or something Let's uh, lock Vorpal here so we quit trying to drag it around. So let's, uh, here we go. Let's lock this. Yeah, looks good. We can lock the hand hider. We'll center it good. Lock it in place. And then we can add, you know, text. Something like that. There's a lot of different ways you can lay this out. Yeah, it'll be fun to get these to be the same size font. You just got to eyeball it. Hopefully, be right with it. Uh, looks pretty close. I think whose it's a little bigger. There we go put that over there something like that there are a lot of different ways you can do it as far as making a hand hider since you tend to have to cover the hand and cover your um, card that you've played there you 
kind of have to make some weird shapes and that can be a little fun to do um, so that can be a little bit of a project but yeah this is uh, how I would recommend doing Vorpal so if you found any of this useful be sure to give this video a thumbs up and a like if you have any comments or questions you can put them down into the comment section and let me know and if you like this channel you could go ahead and hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any of the videos that i post we'll see you around next time